Hey everybody, Jay Barino here. Welcome back. Continuing Metroid Prime 3, Corruption. We just got down to Norian to repel the space pirate. Assault on the planet, coming down from the GFS Olympus. So yeah, the intro to this game is, is certainly different. Certainly different than usual. But I still kind of like this Norian intro, to be honest. Grapple Lasso Online. So this is our first upgrade that's unique to Prime 3 that utilizes some motion controls, uh, both in combat and as part of puzzles, and I th actually think it works pretty well. Lore Scan, Planet Norian. Though located on the fringe of the Federation, the planet Norian is of great importance. The military maintains a strong presence in this sector, and the base on Norian is often the first line of defense against the enemies that operate outside of GF space. Originally a barren orb and capable of sustaining life, a sophisticated terraforming project designed by Aurora Unit 486 has turned Norian into a hardy forest world. Give me that hot lore pop-up. Okay, motion controls. Just be, be nice to me, please. All right. I'm getting the hang of it. It's a little counterintuitive. Again, it was made for motion controls, and I'm just pushing buttons on a keyboard. It functions well enough, but it's not perfect, so I'm going to struggle with it occasionally, that's for sure. Okay, and let's go ahead and scan the blast shield for more research. There are other similar blast shields that actually are not their own scans. They all fall into the blast shield. Okay. You have to kill the arrow mines before you can uh, interact with a panel in this room. There's some other exits, but we don't have the equipment to repair the circuits. So right here, uh, so we can't open that door yet. So it's our first sort of morph ball puzzle room. So we have this Jolly Roger drone that's shooting at us while we're in the in the vents. I do think that this makes the morph ball sections a little more engaging when you have something that's like actively trying to kill you while you're going through them. I think that's neat. But the whole thing here is you have to position yourself to align with the steam so that it pushes you up or doesn't push you away at the right moments. So now we can tear stuff off of other stuff. How exciting. Whoop, well, we don't want to fall in there. Energy tank acquired. That's our second one. Again, pretty generous to get them this early. I'm going to make a run for it. There we go. The, uh, the Galactic Federation not doing too hot against the Space Pirates, as we've seen. So I'm going to scan the red door as early as possible. There aren't many of these in the game, so it's important to scan one as early as you can. Oh, and look at all three of these hot lore scans. Map station doesn't actually count, but that's all right. We scanned it anyway.
Hunter Rundus. Subject is a native of Phrygis, a moon of planet Best 3, known primarily for ice mining. The Phrygisian ability to manipulate and generate ice has come in handy in Subject's career as a bounty hunter. Intel suggests he enjoys hunting to the point where he keeps trophies from all of the targets he successfully captured or killed in his career. Subject is proud, cocky, and arrogant, and considers himself without rival in his field. Hunter Gore. Subject is a veteran of the Liberation War of Wotan 7. Only 6% of Subject's birth body remains, the rest is state-of-the-art cyber warfare. Despite his career and heavily cybernetic, heavy cybernetic modifications, Subject is known for his high level of empathy and compassion. Gore is rather gentle and approaches situations logically, but is not the most skilled of fighters. Intel suggests he even has a sense of humor. Subject is often championed the weak, poor, and downtrodden, working for free or giving bounty money earned to the victims of his targets. Subject can merge his cybernetic body into larger mechanisms, including gunships and fighter craft. This merging will alter Gore's personality, and he will become incredibly aggressive and violent. Data indicates a high proficiency... proficiency with computer infiltration and manipulation. High level of mechanical empathy with artificial intelligence. Hunter Gandreda. Subject homeworld unknown. Possesses metamorphic abilities similar to the biomorphs of Jovia 12. Can assume the form and abilities of most living things, including bioforms considerably larger than the subject. Scans are unable to determine subject's age, but psych eval suggests a high degree of youthfulness. Intel suggests that bounty hunting is akin to a sport for her, one she enjoys considerably. Subject perceives the veteran hunter Samus Aran as her chief rival, a rival she intends to surpass as soon as possible. Yeah, but we're all buddies. We're here to help. Help the feds. This is a reminder of how to use the charge beam, I suppose. There's some mines here that we want to scan. Easy to miss these and just walk right into them. So we got some new space pirates here. Oh, we got some old space pirates, too. So these are just militia. And let's go ahead and scan... Pirate Trooper, battle-ready and vicious, crudely enhanced by phasing. That was a good dodge. I think I still hit him with the missile, so that's all well and good. Go ahead and scan this. Space Pirate ATC. And then new Pirate Militia. And these ones have shields. And these are neat because, like, you, you rip off their shield with the grapple lasso. And then flying pirates. Aero Trooper jetpack provides aero mobility, homing attacks recommended, but not really because they they br they break lock on. So I tend to just spam power beam until they die. You could try missiles if they stop moving. Uh, so any, as you can imagine, there are uh, armored fly uh, flying aero troopers. There's shields, aero troop. There's just all sorts of different pirate combos. Which is why I'm always going to be double checking with my scans. So this thing is vulnerable with the front vent. We scanned one as it was flying away earlier.
Generator A is just through those doors. While you head that way, I'll activate the generator on the west side. Between the two of us, this should be a breeze. Well, thank God they're allowing it. So now we have access to our ship visor, which lets us move our ship around. Eventually, it will allow us to do other things with our ship. Somehow that unlocks the door. Uh, I don't think we need to save right now, so let's just continue. It's like that one isn't its own scan. No way, come back! So we got some Jolly Roger drones. Uh, this is exactly like the Hive mecha fight from the beginning of the first game, where we got our missiles. Uh, it's just very abbreviated. Interestingly enough, these levers do not count as their own research. You think they would, but they don't. So the Federation's using Phazon 2. Let's go ahead and scan this guy. PED Marine Advanced Armor Suit is equipped with Phazon Enhancement Device. Samus, I'm with the PED Delta Squad. My Phazon Enhanced Weaponry should be able to hold off any more trouble. I'll guard this area while you head on to the next generator. Sure thing, buddy. What the heck is that? There he goes. Our nemesis, Meta Ridley. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, and save here. We can move deeper into Norian, and by deeper I mean we're basically just backtracking to get to the other generator.
it's kind of funny how Galactic Federation's getting its butt kicked, but as soon as they deploy the PED Marines, now they're, like, pushing back the Space Pirates with ease. Like, this guy's about to get roasted. That's why I scanned him real early. Good work, friend. More mines in case you missed any scans earlier. A hundred kills? What a treat. I think you get achievements for those up to a thousand. Nope. Oh, please don't push me. Please don't push me. I've made it. I've done it. Having to rely on spring ball. Never my favorite thing. why his personality changes, because we read his lore tidbit. Our scans of the meteor have detected massive quantities of phaser. It could be some sort of bomb. Get him, PED trooper. It's quick thinking. Okay, we'll scan the white blast shield. We can't can't open those yet. We'll be coming back to Norian uh, significantly later into the game when we have a lot more upgrades. There's really not that much to pick up here, but I'd rather just do it all at once later. Rather than have to make multiple trips after we leave the first time. And there's a glass barrier at the bottom of this room, so you have to take the Morph Ball tunnels to get down there. Thanks, cold, emotionless robot adjutant. Trying to not get hit to Ridley for an achievement. Touching his hands also counts. It's actually way more difficult than you might expect. Probably the hardest one in the game, in my opinion. I did it. I didn't expect to get it on my first try. Flawless escape, that's goddamn right. Samus, I was able to get Generator B back online. If you need any help, oh, here they come again. I just passed up a save station. Didn't need to stop. I like how Rundus just outright does one of the objectives for you. I like how you get to see all the other bounty hunters in action as well through this whole part. I'm doing pretty good with the motion control stuff. 
I thought I'd be having a much harder time. When I streamed this, I struggled a lot. It's not intuitive at all. Samus, our efforts to slow the meteor have failed. You must hurry. Thanks again, robot. Another Jolly Roger drone here just giving us a hard time. Yeah, get used to hearing the Aurora unit reminding you what you need to do constantly. Just constantly. I do like the consistency there, where if you look in the other generator room that you already activated, all these uh, all these tubes and stuff are, are in the other generator, even though you don't have to use them. But again, it's just sort of that consistency. we go. So let's scan him. This is a very strange mini boss. Meta Ridley, durable armor skin protects body, fires plasma attacks from mouth. Target's body is covered with incredibly durable armor skin, making it difficult to damage. All parts of the body are protected except for the mouth, where Meta Ridley fires his plasma-powered weaponry. Observing target may reveal additional target points. Target will use powerful plasma-based ranged attacks along with potent melee strikes. So because we're aimed down, I actually cannot aim left to right. The only way I can aim left to right is if I... is if I strafe my body left and right. So I'm mostly just aiming with... Again, my body positioning as opposed to the actual crosshair. I'm less concerned about taking damage here. Any like weird background power beam echoes? That was strange. Yeah. It keeps happening. Very weird. Uh, it's virtually impossible to hit him with a missile or a charge shot, so I'm just going to spam Power Beam to finish this up. Okay, now he's above us. I don't know what's going on with this echoed Power Beam, but I guess we're just going to deal with it here against the Ridley, Ridley fight. I love how much of a doofus he looks like when he's hanging on to you like this. Just look at his stupid face. <laughs> this is probably the best chance to get consistent damage onto him when you when you blast his hand like that. You also notice this is timed based on the distance of the shaft that you're falling down. It's surprisingly difficult to hit him from this far away. And I don't really care about taking damage from the beam, I just want to get in as much damage as possible. Just about. 
out. Yeah, it's just a very strange encounter. Defeated Ridley. How deep did they make these generator pits where you're falling for like five minutes at terminal velocity? Alright, now we have to get back. The reason that I loitered in that previous room is because if, if an adjutant or some sort of narration is happening and you trigger a cinematic, like when we run out there like we did and we saw the, the meteor coming in, uh, it'll force the narration to restart from the beginning after that. So I just waited for her to finish, I tapped through all the dialogue, let her talk, and then we went from there. Oh, thanks for breaking that. It's a little easier for us to traverse now. fun nail biter when the game seems like it might crash at any moment. Alright, so we're going to go back through this debris and now we'll be able to interact with a door because all the generators are online. We're also coming up to an elevator with all three bounty hunters in it. We've already scanned Gore, but this is our only opportunity to scan Rundus and Gendreda in person. So you have to do it here or you'll never be able to. Metamorphic bioform able to mimic numerous enemy units in battle. Possesses the ability to generate and manipulate ice. If we don't make it to the top in time, we can kiss this planet goodbye. Hey, relax. We're the good guys. Justice will prevail and all that stuff. Right, Samus? Here, here. Let's do this.
She's coming too. Can you hear me, Samus? Vital signs are stable. Welcome back, Samus. You've been asleep for quite some time. A month, to be exact. We feared we'd lost you. Thanks to your great work, Norion is now safe. At the end of the battle, we found you and the other hunters all unconscious. Our medical examinations then yielded surprising results. Your bodies are now, somehow, self-generating Phazon. What's even stranger is that there are no negative effects to your health. This led us to investigate if we could make effective use of this Phazon. During the invasion on Norian, you must have noticed some powerful troopers in new suits. They were wearing what we call Phazon Enhancement Devices, or PEDs. We integrated this same Phazon Enhancement Device into your armor while repairing your damaged bodysuit. Troopers wearing this device have Phazon pumped to their weapons from an external backpack. This gives them an extra boost in firepower. But in your case, think about it. With this Phazon coursing through your body, you can fuel the PED using your own internal energy. Pretty effective, don't you think? Why don't you try the PED now? Seal the room. Initiate PED program. Recharging energy reserves. Injecting one energy tank of Phazon into the PED system will activate hyper mode. Right, so that bar on top is an energy tank's worth of energy. So this effectively lets us use our health Use our health as uh, ammunition for this really powerful mode. You must have noticed during this test that hyper mode possesses devastating power. Over the past month, we've learned the hard way just how powerful our enemies are. To deal with them, you'll need the firepower of the PED suit. Now that you are familiar with the workings of the PED device, the Aurora Unit 242 would like to meet with you. There are many pressing matters to discuss. The AU chamber is located just off the command bridge. You'd better get going. Good luck. Oh, and one more thing. After 25 seconds, the safety feature automatically ends hyper mode. You'll have to keep paying attention. PED suit acquired. So this is the only suit we have through the whole game. Uh, but as we get more powerful, we will get progressively more blue. How exciting. Right, let's get some of that hot Phazon lore. Phazon is a substance of extragalactic origin. It is a highly radioactive ore with extreme mutagenic properties. It has a certain biological qualities, including the ability to reproduce itself. Exposure to Phazon often affects the brains of sentient beings, causing erratic, destructive behavior. It is also a potent source of energy, surpassing even fuel gel and pure output potential. It can be handled carefully, as it must be handled carefully, as it can cause Phazon sickness if used incorrectly. Phazon Enhancement Device. The Phazon Enhancement Device is designed to harness the energy of Phazon Minerals, originally discovered on Ether for a new Federation weapon system. It is being tested by a GF Marine Battalion stationed in the Norian system. Marines can initiate an energy siphon from a supply of Phazon carried in a backpack into their armor suits. This allows them to temporarily enhance the exoskeletal and weapon systems of their armor suits. To date, no Marines have displayed signs of Phazon sickness. Yeah, but uh, thanks, Galactic Federation, for attaching this thing to my suit and turning me into a bioweapon of your design without asking while I was comatose. Seems, uh, questionably ethical. Unethical. Right, so now all of the energy pickups have been replaced by phasing pickups because we no longer have energy as health. Our health is literally phasing. So all these little pickups here are now phasing. So when you go into hyper mode, realize that, again, that is one full energy tank. If you expend that whole bar, you're going to be down 99, 100 energy. So it's a it's a pretty significant trade-off. Could hit the save station here. I don't think that's necessary. Samus, you made it. Glad to hear you're feeling better. You've been cleared to enter the AU chamber. Please proceed through these doors and up the lift. The Aurora unit is expecting you.
don't worry, as soon as we're off of the GFS Olympus this time, the game opens up quite significantly for us. Clearance confirmed, G5. Opening chamber vault. I definitely think that the, that this whole section where they introduce hyper mode could be a lot more concise, but alas. Good luck, Samus. Samus, the fleet is now moving to the rendezvous location. You will no longer be able to dock with us from this point forward. Rest assured, we will keep communication lines open and supply you with information when necessary. Good luck, Umbrio. All right. So now we could go really wherever we want. We could go to Elysia, but after the first room, it's locked to us. So they just outright tell us, hey, go to Brio. So we'll do exactly that. There's only one place to land. Eventually, we're going to open up three, actually four more, I think. But that's kind of a, a part of the exploration in this game, is to find map stations that unlock new landing zones, or, or just exploring and finding new landing zones being able to move your ship around and sort of leapfrog. It's kind of a neat idea that they introduced here. Alright, we made it. Now we can actually play the game. I'm looking forward to exploring Brio with you all next time. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.